untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white token Convoke deck which has been making the rounds in Pioneer. This is the adjusted version for Explorer and the only main difference here is that we don't have access to Reckless Bushwhacker yet which is an excellent way to close out the game once you make a few tokens so instead we're playing four copies of Regal Leosaur but let's get to that in a second. First off, our payoff cards. Of course, we need some Convoke cards for this Convoke deck to work, and Knight Errant of Eos is one of the main reasons this deck has popped up recently. A 5-mana 4-4 four, four with Convoke, so we can tap our creatures to help pay for its cost, and in this deck, the goal should always be to tap 5 creatures to Convoke out your Knight Errant, so it can find additional Knight Errants as we take a look at the top 6 cards of our library, because we can reveal up to 2 creature cards with mana value X or less from among them, where X is the number of creatures that convoked the knight errant and then put those cards into our hand so if we're not able to convoke for five then of course the next number should be two because we do have a lot of two drops we can hit with it as well no three or four drops in between and then the other convoke payoff is a venerated loxodon 4-4 and then when it enters the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that convoked it so that can also lead to some explosive starts and speaking of explosive starts another reason this deck can exist now is thanks to gleeful demolition one mana sorcery destroy target artifact if you controlled that artifact create three one one red frex and goblin creature tokens and that's the goal we're going to destroy our own artifact to generate three one one tokens and we can do so as early as turn one if we blow up our own ornithopter the zero mana o2 flyer is indeed an artifact has a few other uses besides enabling demolition it's another cheap creature we can play to enable convoke so we can play a free ornithopter to help increase our creature count it's also a creature that can maybe be pumped up by a regal leosaur or a castle embrith to deal some damage and of course the plus one counter from loxodon can also increase its power and then it's also a way to potentially enable our clarion spirit to make a one one spirit token if we've cast a second spell so that's also a reason to sometimes hang on to Ornithopter until after we've played a Clarion Spirit. And then other early enablers for demolition include our Voldaren Epicure, a 1-1 one -one that makes a blood token when it enters and deals 1 damage, and then the Thraben Inspector, a 1-2 that makes a clue token as opposed to a blood token, which can be sacrificed for 2 mana to draw a card. And then at 2 mana we've got more token makers with Clarion Spirit making a 1-1 one -one flyer whenever we cast our second spell each turn, and our deck is pretty good at double spelling with a free Ornithopter. Burning Tree can make a red and a green when it enters, which helps us play more cards afterwards and increase our creature count on the the board and then casting our convoke cards is another way of maybe double spelling after playing clarion spirit in the same turn to immediately make a spirit token and then there's forbidden friendship probably the most important token maker as it makes a hasty 1-1 dino that can attack right away and then a human soldier that's white and the fact that the human soldier is white is actually quite relevant because sometimes we do end up with a bunch of red 1-1 goblins and then we won't be able to necessarily get the most out of our knight errant if we don't have a white creature that we can tap for or convoke so having that white human is actually quite important and then there's a goblin instigator just makes two red 1-1s the upside here over friendship is that it's an actual creature so we can find it with Knight Errant, whereas we cannot find Forbidden Friendship with it. And then we mentioned Burning Tree, another way to add more creatures to the board and give us those explosive openers, even if we don't have a Gleeful Demolition. We can still play multiple Burning Trees and maybe play one of these red cards on two mana as well. And then there's also the Clue Token or maybe the Blood Token that we can sacrifice with the mana from Burning Tree. And then our final card is Regal Leosaur, which replaces Reckless Bushwhacker, which is currently played in the Pioneer builds of the deck. Since we're an explorer, we don't have access to Bushwhacker yet, so we're running a Regal Leosaur instead. But the idea is still the same. We want a creature that can pump up our whole team, so we can find it with a Knight Errant, and it can help us close out games once we have a wide board, and the opponent maybe has a few blockers lined up. So this will mutate onto a non-human, giving the other creatures we control plus two plus one until end of turn. And if we mutate multiple Leosaurs on the same creature we can potentially stack that ability but usually one of them is enough to close out the game 
but once we do get Reckless Bushwhacker, that's going to be a nice upgrade, as we can now potentially give a bunch of tokens haste in the same turn, and it only costs 2 mana to surge a Bushwhacker, whereas it costs 3 mana to mutate a Leosaur, which can also make a difference. And another way to pump up our team is with Castle Emberth, which can be a little awkward since it can only enter untapped if we control a mountain, but we do have 6 basic mountains, and then Sacred Foundry also counts as a mountain for Castle Emberth purposes, and then it costs 3 mana and tap Castle, so 4 mana total, to give our team a plus one plus zero until end of turn but that one extra power can also make a big difference when we're going wide and then the rest of our mana base just needs to have a lot of red white untapped dual lands that we can play right away so inspiring vantage is perfect and then sacred foundry also very nice with castle and battlefield forge to round things out could also potentially play mana confluence as another untapped land that will make both colors but then we're decreasing the mountain count for castle Emberth, so it does have some repercussions so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is lacking a Convoke payoff, or a Leosaur could have been decent with Friendship and Ornithopter. So let's take Mulligan. This is missing that explosiveness that we get from maybe a Gleeful Demolition, but Epicure into Friendship gives us a white creature to Convoke Knight Errant. Could be worse. And then Castle comes into play untapped, also important. If we find a Demolition, that would be nice. Although we'll still need that white creature for Convoke. Opponent red-black. And their own Epicure, so more of a Sacrifice deck most likely. So the red creature is the one that has haste. So our opponent's more likely to trade with that one. Although maybe I'm better off just going with Instigator, keeping the white creature safe so we can use it for Convoke purposes. And then we also don't really want to trade for Epicure since we would prefer five creatures that we can tap. Okay, Anvil's next. So something we don't want to see is Mayhem Devil, which is a reason to go for Loxodon before Knight Errant, so we can grow all the 1-1s, one so they don't simply die to a Mayhem Devil. And then next turn we can maybe keep going with the Knight Errant. Could keep land in hand for blood token purposes, but I might want to activate castle, so I'll play it out. And then we might need the artifact for a gleeful demolition as well. And yeah, there's a mayhem devil, so now sacking the blood token also deals one damage with the devil. So ideally, what do we want to draw? Not quite sure. Something like a Leosaur could be good eventually. Could maybe find it with a Knight Errant. Vantage will come into play tapped right now, but that's fine. So, yeah, let's Convoke. And then I think I want to tap five creatures for this. To potentially find more five drops. Found Burning Tree, Clarion Spirit, and Knight Errant. So, if I grab... Burning Tree plus Knight Errant, I could still Convoke. That seems decent, since I won't be able to play Clarion Spirit this turn. And then I could Convoke for just two creatures, so Loxodon can attack, which I also don't mind, since it's not like we have any three mana creatures we can find. And found Thraven Inspector Ornithopter. Or do we just want Double Inspector? The clue tokens are a little bit awkward with uh, Mayhem Devil. So I might prefer Ornithopter in case we top deck Leosaur so we can uh, pump the team. And then I'll run it out now. And hit for four. Well, we're certainly doing things. Making lots of four fours. Finding more cards. Opponents prepare to jump Loxodon. And next turn activating Castle could also just be good enough, we'll see. Another reason to run out Ornithopter. If we were playing a version with Bushwhacker, that's sometimes a reason to hang on to Ornithopter, but of course don't have Bushwhacker in Explorer yet. Opponent found Obnixilus, pretty good alongside all these one damage effects. They don't quite have an infinite combo yet, but they can certainly do some damage.
Okay, opponent found two lands, passes it back. And uh, yeah, I think we're just attacking all out, activating castle. These blocks are not going to work out all that well. But I think our opponent was dead regardless. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems a little bit tame. We don't have demolition, we don't have any convo creatures, so we're just making a bunch of tokens, but don't have any way of pumping them up either. So this seems a bit better now. Demolition on Ornithopter and then Burning Tree Friendship. Although sadly have to get rid of one card here. And it's not all that clear which one that's going to be since Leosaur is kind of necessary for this hand to deal some damage if we don't find a Convo creature instead. Burning Tree gives us a bit more explosiveness but maybe not quite as important as having the Friendship making more tokens. Especially if we need some white creatures for Convoke. So, turn one. Ornithopter Demolition. Turn two, potentially attack for four. And then a third land could be effective. Initiate's actually annoying since it blocks our 1-1s profitably. So Loxodon is now the perfect response. Make more tokens and give them an extra plus one counter. Is their opponent on the human aggro deck? Could see a Thalia, and yep, there it is. 2 1 first strike also lines up pretty well, unless we can mutate Leosaur. Emissary doesn't quite do it. So, do we still want to attack all out? I think we do. Opponent can eat a 2 2, but we'll get a good chunk of damage in. And then, hopefully next turn, we can mutate Leosaur, pumping the team. Something like a Brutal Cathar on Loxodon could be effective. And yep, there it is. So they've had a pretty ideal start, all things considered, but we just had a very explosive opening. And now Loxodon we can still convoke, although it wouldn't be for the max amount since our opponent was uh, aware of our white creature being more valuable than the red ones. No attacks. Still waiting on that third land for Leosaur. All our lands should be untapped, at least. Vanguard pumps the team. So Thalia can keep up with the 3-3s, three but now Leosaur should be pretty effective. And I don't think there's any instant speed interaction our opponent could have, especially with their own Thalia. So let's target Loxodon, which doesn't need more help. And we'll go under. And attack all out. Opponent's got one profitable block on the 4-3 with Thalia, but that's about it. Ooh, Brave the Elements, I take it back. So now their team has protection from red, and they could line up some profitable blocks. Although we should have just enough attackers for 8 damage to go through, so I don't think it's going to save them. But yeah, otherwise could have been very effective indeed. A card that has fallen out of favor in the recent mono-white builds, but here it looks pretty good. Sweet, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is pretty decent, just no Gleeful Demolition to speed things up. But we've got an artifact to enable it in case we draw one. And our opponent seems to be on the same deck. Playing with Gigantha's Companion means they don't have Burning Tree in their build. But yeah, if we see turn 2 Gleeful Demolition, we could be in trouble. Our plan is Burning Tree into Friendship, and then start Convoking afterwards. Castle Embrith could also make the difference late game. And there's a Demolition, so they've got another Ornithopter or 1-drop. They could Convoke for the full amount. This opponent's definitely off to 
the better start on the play as well. So we've got a lot of catching up to do. Well, I guess one good start deserves another. So now Burning Tree into Gleeful Demolition. And then we can do the same as our opponent did. Have to keep up with their board presence before we worry about Knight Errant. So an extra land for Mutated Leosaur could be effective. But now it's going to be an interesting back and forth where you want to Convoke to progress your board, but Convoking also leaves you mostly tapped out. So that can be dangerous. So just a Loxodon attacking. Do we want to take the trade? I think that's fine. Since we're on the draw, we want to trade resources as much as possible. And this might be a Knight Errant. Yep. For the full amount. So that does potentially leave them a bit vulnerable on the way back. Bolt Hound's a nice addition as a creature they can also find with Knight Errant to pump up the team. And did they save an Ornithopter? Nope. Okay, so no land for Leosaur, unfortunately. So the best I can do is probably Friendship, Convoke Knight Errant. And then hopefully not leave ourselves dead on the way back. So, time for the goblins. Find Loxodon Burning Tree. And pass it back. So, Bolt Hound's gonna hurt. Are we dead to it is a question. It's gonna be close. Can put Knight Errant on Knight Errant. Block, block. And then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Not quite lethal. So we may not have to trade Knight Errants. So let's say we try to avoid that. Block something like this. Then there's still 9, 14 going through. And that preserves the best possible board. Could also take 17, leaving an extra creature alive. So just double checking, 4 times 3, 12, plus 5, 17. And then we have an extra attacker. Opponent only has the one blocker right now. So I'm counting on this uh, Leo Sword to potentially end the game for us. And does an extra attacker make a difference in that case? Because if it doesn't, there's no point. I don't think the extra attacker makes a difference after doing some quick math, so might as well trade in case we don't draw the land for Leosaur. Also, if we draw a Pain Land or a Shock Land, I won't have the life to necessarily use the Leosaur. Found the untapped land, so let's mutate on a non-human. And go over. And attack all out. Opponent can jump and then should still take lethal here. Wow, that was an unexpected comeback, but uh, yeah, that turn to Gleeful Demolition made all the difference. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a pretty nice hand. We've got double Ornithopter to enable Demolition, which will be able to set up uh, our Knight Errant pretty early. So yeah, we've got Ornithopter, Demolition. And then next turn, friendship into a knight errant would be perfect. Opponent blue white could be maybe a spirit deck, could be control. Although control typically doesn't run Seacrim Coast, so yeah, Shacklegeist makes sense. So friendship makes a red and a white token, which is perfect for setting up our knight errant. And we'll find Burning Tree and Inspector. So a bit of a lack of uh, five drops and potential finishers like Leosaur. Now I might want to run out Ornithopter. And then next turn we're looking at Burning Tree into maybe another Friendship. 
can certainly start attacking with our tokens. Okay, Invasion's gonna have a look at our hand. And the spirits are perfect for pressuring it to transform. But, uh, yeah. Opponent grabs Burning Tree, so that costs 4 mana. And a Cure Obsession means they could transform Invasion at once. Although then Cure Obsession is not going to draw. Could of course Chum Block, which is maybe the ideal play here. Prevent them from transforming Invasion. Another Knight Errant was a nice draw. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got our Demolition, but no Enabler. So we'll Mulligan. Now we've got the Enablers, but no Demolition. Is it good enough to keep still? Feels a bit on the weak side. Can play Inspector, turn to Friendship, turn 3 Convoke. Is that good enough? Feels like we need at least an Ornithopter or a Burning Tree. Or, uh, of course, Demolition to speed things up a bit. Okay, this is much better. So, do I just get rid of an Ornithopter and... Could also get rid of a land, and then go Inspector, turn to Ornithopter Demolition, still Convoke. So in this deck it's definitely worth it to mulligan aggressively to find these Explosive Openers. Just gotta hope our opponent does not have a Counterspell available. No need to show them Ornithopter just yet, could also enable Clarion Spirits in case something bad happens to Knight Errant or Demolition. Okay, let's give it a shot. That worked. Finding another Knight Errant. We're up against a Jeskai deck. Could be Control, so maybe the card advantage is better than the extra counters. Although we could just grab both here. And uh, yeah, that's certainly an option, although at least Thraben Inspector I can play with a single land. So we'll maybe hedge our bets a little bit. Three mana for Idyllic Tutor, so an enchantment deck. Could be a Solemnity combo deck. Nine lives at least by itself, not amazing when we're going wide. So if we can present nine attackers, that would be ideal. So maybe we go for another Gleeful Demolition on Ornithopter. And then we can Convoke out another Knight Errant. Find a Burning Tree. Okay, so for being stuck on one lane, we're still doing a decent job. If our opponent plays 9 lives, we can just hit them with 9 creatures, so that doesn't do it. But they might have some other answers here. Like a Spring Verdict. Yeah, that'll uh, definitely set us back a bit, I would say. So, probably fine to play Clarion Spirit now, and then next turn we can maybe Burning Tree and play something else. And there's a 9 lives now. And if they follow that up with a Solemnity, I don't think we have any outs. Okay, so now I can uh, Burning Tree, play Inspector, crank the Clue, or we could Convoke another Knight Errant, we'll see. If I crack the clue, we're one mana short of Convoking, so I should probably just Convoke right now. And then I might have to go full control here just to make sure we don't use up the red mana. Since we could still find a red one drop we can cast, but not a green one. Okay, double Leosaur, not the best against nine lives, so we'll go with Burning Tree Epic here, I guess. And then play Epicure. One counter to the nine lives, so Epicure is not too bad here. And another Supreme Verdict. Well, we actually managed to rebuild somewhat successfully after the first one. Don't think the second one's beatable. So let's uh, crank the clue with the mana from Burning Tree, perhaps. Play another Epicure. 
And then I'll hang on to the lane to sack to the blood tokens. No point in playing it out. Okay, opponent with the merriment, so they haven't found their solemnity to set up the combo yet. But the merriment can take over pretty quickly. Okay, friendship. And hit for three, so nine lives up to six counters potentially. Never mind, Dovin's Veto. So just uh, two more on the nine lives, up to six, so yeah, three more and we get there. But now, of course, the Merriment is going to take over. The Rogue kills Epicure, can block Burning Tree. And if they ever find Solemnity alongside nine lives, we won't be able to win the game anymore. Opponent keeps cycling. Okay. Activate Blood Token, discard Vantage. And another Forbidden Friendship. So if we play it, probably no point in attacking all out, since then our opponent just eats the 1-1 one -one and uh, lets the Emissary through, so let's start by attacking. And then they might chump with a 1-2. And then we can friendship second main. Three ones not the worst for us, since the one ones can attack into it. And now an invasion of a new Phyrexia. Yeah, that should stabilize them nicely. So yeah, I think the game's over now. We tried our best. Castle's actually not the worst, since that lets us pump up the one ones, but yeah. I think uh, the knights are going to be too much for us to handle. Could have considered leaving Burning Tree back to make them commit more knights on the invasion. But yeah, Pono now also found the Solemnity, so they've won multiple ways. But in reality, it was the early Supreme Verdict that saved the day. Play a 4 for Loxodon. Bird opponent can attack all out, and that should do it. Alright, GG's. Opponent with an interesting Jeskai Enchantments deck with a enchantment combo that they can tutor up thanks to Idyllic Tutor, but then also some good interaction. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. We've got Inspector to set up a Demolition and then Burning Tree will come in handy as well. So let's start with Sacred Foundry Inspector. And then next turn Double Burning Tree Demolition should still let us Convoke Knight Errant. And our opponent on a red-white heroic deck instead. Okay, let's go for it. Burning Tree Into another burning tree. Even have a mana to spare here. And find a Leosaur and probably go for Epicure over Ornithopter. Although if I play Ornithopter now, then next turn it gets the benefit from a Leosaur, so maybe that's better. Now we'll still need to find a land to mutate Leosaur, and our opponent could also keep up instant speed removal to deny the plus two plus one to the team. So we'll see. It's going to be a defiant strike for starters. Maybe trying to hit her second land drop. We'll have to watch out for her reckless rage at instant speed, but no opponent has seen enough already. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is not amazing. Could be decent if we find. A second land, any land will do really, even our Castle Embereth will be untapped. Because then we can go double Burning Tree Friendship, and then still Convoke Knight Errant. So, it's definitely a risky hand, but I think the upside is high enough that I should keep. 
going down to six doesn't guarantee a better hand. And here we just need to draw a land for it to be a pretty good hand. So yeah, a lot riding on this next draw step. Thoughtseize can certainly mess things up. Taking the Friendship or the Knight Errant I think makes the most sense. Friendship is the way we can make a white creature for Convoke, but we'll eventually Convoke the Knight Errant, so... Knight Errant's gone, did find the land, so we still have a decent turn lined up, just not quite as exciting. Now we're a bit light on action in hand, but we're pretty far ahead on board. Opponent mono black, so I'm not sure what to make of it, but now a gleeful demolition adds more tokens to the board. So can attack all out, maybe see a removal spell on a burning tree. That's fine. Just gotta dodge a sweeper. Trespasser is good too. Can gain some life back. But we just gotta keep on turning the team sideways. So they can block Burning Tree. Take seven. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand is good, not great. If we find a Gleeful Demolition, Ornithopter, Burning Tree, those would all improve things. So we have a lot of outs to make it better, but the fail case is still at least playable. Get to probably lead with Inspector, turn two. Could try Clarion Spirit, depending on the matchup. Or we could hang on to it until we Convoke with Loxodon to guarantee an extra Spirit token. White mana more likely to be a bottleneck, so we'll start with the Inspector. Opponent on the Green Devotion with a turn 1 Elf. Okay, so now don't need to play around removal on the Clarion Spirit really, so we can run it out and then next turn empty out our hand pretty much. Turn to Kiora, perhaps, or a uh, Wolfolo Haven. And yep, still two mana left. And it's gonna be a Lenor Elves. Something else? Nope. Okay, play Vantage while it's still untapped. And then we're just gonna empty out our hand here. Trigger Spirit, and then how do we want to Convoke? Probably not tapping the Clarion Spirit itself, but the rest. So we can hit for two. And then Castle Embereth will be our play next turn, most likely. So everything's on the board, as it should be. Can our opponent stabilize? If they play a big threat like Cavalier of Thorns, they can block Loxodon, but still take a ton of damage. So they really need to be able to combo off here, making a ton of mana with maybe a Kiora or a Storm the Festival into more things, and then uh, try to present a huge board all of a sudden. Devotion count is three for Nykthos, so still doesn't generate additional mana yet, but that can quickly change. Another Haven. So now we could see a Storm the Festival, perhaps. Cavalier of Thorns. Okay, that's still acceptable. One card left in hand, but this Castle Embereth is going to make a big difference. Play it, turn the team sideways. So, not sure if this is lethal, we might be one damage off. Opponent can block Loxodon, block another creature, and yeah, I think they'll end up at one, but from one life it shouldn't be too difficult to close out the game. Q 
Hiora is next. Tons of devotion to work with now. Can't forget about Lair of the Hydra as a mana sink. Although shouldn't be enough to present lethal, so is a last card something scary? Make a wolf with a haven as an extra blocker. Not gonna be enough. There's a lair, but yeah. Opponent's a little bit short here. Four blockers. Two are six attackers. So our opponent's maybe gonna go out swinging with the lair. Nope, just makes another wolf. And let's just turn the team sideways again. All right. So functional draw from the green devotion deck. Maybe a lacking one final finisher, but we still managed to get there even without a gleeful demolition to start out. So yeah, overall quite impressed by this red-white convoke deck. Now it is certainly a beatable strategy if you come prepared. A uh, strategy like Green-White Angel Life Gain I found to be pretty difficult if they're off to a somewhat reasonable start. An early Bishop of Wings followed by Resplendent Angel, when we don't have any removal to take those out, can gain enough life to survive the early Go White plan, and then the Angels will usually take over, so that can be a rough matchup. And then once you move to best of three, of course there's a ton of cheap sweepers that the opponent could be packing to disrupt your game plan, and uh, that's not necessarily gonna work out. But overall, pretty fun deck just make sure to mulligan aggressively to look for those explosive openers since you're probably not going to get there with a fair draw so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd